now and let Andy and Jamie take over. Hey, Scott. Thank you. Hi, Jamie. How are you? Andy, good evening or afternoon, depending on what time zone everybody might be in. What's uh, going on? Good morning in that case, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Not a whole lot, man. Not a whole lot. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Looks like we're going to have a good crowd, and I like to always thank people for coming in, taking time out of their day to, to try to learn something, and it's our job. Hello, Mike C. How are you, buddy? I was, I was wondering when you were going to stroll in here. Uh, yeah, it, it's our job to to do, just do that, you know, to entertain you and not only that, but to hopefully uh, give you some something that you can take with you today that will help you become a better trader, a better investor, whatever your time frame might be. But uh, let's dive in, okay, and bear with us. We're going to go through some of our uh, slides for the new people uh, and some of the ones, uh, some of the people who may have only been with us for uh, a couple of weeks or so. But first of all, I need to talk about uh, the disclaimer here, okay? We are content publishers. This is for educational purposes only. Uh, nothing that you see or hear today should be construed as investment advice. If that's what you're looking for, you want to seek out uh, somebody with a Series 7. Uh, that would be a stockbroker, a uh, registered advisor. Uh, all right, let's dive in into the support, education, and training. Uh, that we do have here. Uh, you can see along the left side there, guys, we'd like to provide as much education and training as we can, and we do so, and we take pride in doing so. Uh, we have a webinar every uh, Monday through Thursday in this same time slot. That would be 5 Eastern time. Uh, you can see the combination over there. It's usually myself, Jamie, and Steve kind of uh, juggling the responsibilities, paired up in twos. Uh, but we do on uh, on Wednesdays, uh, we have our CEO, Dan Merkin, and our CTO, Brad Williams, will come in. Uh, and then we have, as you see down on the bottom, guys, we have the support, support webinar. And this is every Monday through fr Friday at 12 Eastern time, okay? This is the place you want to come if you have questions. Uh, and the reason I want you, or we want you to come here versus sending us uh, something to our email is because here you have a visual. OK, you're able to ask questions and then see it not only being answered, but you can see it uh, uh, a visual uh, presentation of what your question pertaining to your question. So uh, please, if you can make that, if you have any questions, that's every Monday through Friday at 12 Eastern time. And that is on live stream. Uh, so I'm sorry, th these are not recorded uh, daily, but uh, hopefully you guys can make it. And let's not forget about the traders room. Uh, the traders room is a is a great place if you want to trade and and follow some really good traders in there. But it's also a great place to learn. Okay, people can be very helpful in there. Mainly Barry. Barry uh, loves when you ask questions. Uh, obviously, he's also trading, but he has he finds time uh, time to answer your questions as well. All right, uh, let me talk just real briefly on the simulated trading we have here at uh, Trade Ideas. Uh, call it a paper trader, if you will, but it's a great interface, guys, for you to come in and start firing off paper trades. And you can trade any time frame you want. You can day trade, you can swing trade, you can uh, uh, get a whole bunch of trades on your blotter and just kind of manage them. So uh, you do not need a broker connection. OK, and you do not need to fund an account. Everything's done on our server here. So uh, it's a great little tool. We're very proud of it. And I actually trade a, a live account on it. I've uh, been doing it for well over a year now with uh, some of the other guys here. Uh, man, man, take it from somebody who's traded on about 10, over 10 platforms. Uh, this is by far, you know, head and, head and heels above the, the others. It's, it's a really cool interface. So take advantage of that. There's no extra charge, okay? As long as you have a standard subscription, you have access to that paper trader. All right, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to click one more time. There we go. Look at the agenda for today. We're going to talk about the market recap. Uh, I'll have some insight on that. It's kind of some quirky stuff going on now, but uh, we'll talk about that when the time comes. And Jamie will take it over for the Holly recap and go over uh, the trades. Wasn't a whole lot of them today, I don't think, were the Jamie. But, uh, nope, and that's kind of keeping in tradition with the past kind of kind of week, uh, just mm -hmm. lackluster performance, you could call it, or just really an absence of statistically weighted alpha out there. 
in the market conditions that we're in. Yeah, I think so. Maybe Holly senses the election coming up or something. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, I think it has a lot to do with some of the price action we're seeing in some of this stuff. There's a lot of uh, uh, reallocating going around, I think, right now. Uh, once again, we'll talk, we'll talk about that when we come to the market recap. And then this is something I built, uh, this SMA tracker. I actually built this for a fund manager a while back, but it's a really uh, cool tool. Uh, I talked about it maybe, oh, it's been well over a year ago. Uh, I added some more columns and uh, uh, and I think this will be fun. It's, it's a great little top list where you guys can, uh, it's great for watch list. Uh, if you have a watch list or if you just wanna track, you know, the S&P 500, whatever you wanna do, you can do it. But uh, yeah, it's a really uh, cool little watch list uh, to, and the sort feature is is what I kind of want to show off today. How you can just uh, use this, this the sort feature to find, uh, you know, find uh, you know profitability, you know, find uh, opportunity in the marketplace. And then we've been having a lot of fun with these price alerts, guys. Uh, so I want everybody out there who wants to play have a stock in mind, okay? And you need to give me the stock and the entry point, and we will set a price alert. OK, we'll also go over past uh, last week's winner uh, or a couple of winners here. Uh, boy, several of them went off. I think maybe all of them may have gone off, but uh, and they were really doing good. But we did have a little pullback over the last couple of days, which I thought was funny since the market kept going to highs. But uh, like I said, it's kind of the way the market is right now. We'll take a look at those here uh, when we're done. But let me back out first right now and uh, let's go over the market recap. And we always start out with the spies because it's more equal weighted, a lot more stocks comprising of the S&P index here. Boy, looking at it on the surface, even though the volume was very light today, you can see up there in the volume on my single stock window here uh, was 0 0.70. So very light volume, but nonetheless, look what we have here. Okay, we have a nice little pivot level. If you can draw it right there that we're above and closed above we will see if we can build on that not a whole lot of uh, uh resistance going to this level over here so very interesting maybe i don't know if we're, what's going to happen actually but uh not a lot of enthusiasm uh in the spies today as we did take out a month long you know uh, a month old high uh closed out of that little range there although barely we'll see if there's any continuation here tomorrow but Nothing bearish can be said, you know, right now. So let's, uh, you know, if you're bullish, I think you just want to kind of want to hope uh, that we can build on that. Uh, I want to keep in the back of your mind, we do have an all important election. It, there, there's there's things that can take this, you know, like much like the action we saw back over here on this day, on this day, you know, with what I'm seeing in the marketplace, I there's not a lot of liquidity and all it would take is a little bit of scare and bring this thing right back down to our averages. So you kind of, kind of keep that in the back of your mind there. Uh, let's take a look at the cues because I've noticed some of the big queue, uh, our big boys in that sector haven't, uh, haven't been playing. And you can see uh, by the looks of this chart right here that this, the cues have not gotten above this level like the spies have. And uh, Steve pointed out today that the IWM, you know, we talked about reallocation. Let's take a look at the IWM. And really, it's overperforming. It's uh, it's relative strength is in the IWM and the small caps. When's the last time we said that, guys? Uh, it, you know, this and this is definitely showing some strength there. You know, took out uh, uh, this level actually a couple of days ago and and building on it. So. Looks like we do have some money coming out of maybe some high-flying tech stocks and, and into the uh, IWM. If you look on the daily, you can see they're still a long ways away, guys, from their all-time high set back over here. But there's definitely some strength, and I guess that's all-time highs. Am I missing? Yeah, that's all-time highs. Yep. Uh, okay, so uh, so there you have it. The relative strength is in the uh, – in the IWM right now. So let's, let's take a look at Apple. I, I was mentioning this to the guys today, not playing ball at all. I mean, it hasn't done really anything in the last, uh, you know, couple of weeks. It's kind of trending going sideways there. 
uh, Facebook, although I had a decent day today, still kind of in no man's land, right in the middle of its five day range. Uh, let's take a look at Goog, see what it's up to. You know, once again, just like Facebook, good day today, but still below its 50 moving average. So, uh, take a look at one other Amazon and uh, same thing. They're just not, not seeing a lot of uh, excitement in these in these big tech stocks. So, uh, could be some, like I said, some reallocation out of this into the small caps. People looking for maybe some value out there. Uh, will time will tell. But for right now, I think, uh, boy, the IWM is uh, is looking uh, looking pretty pretty good compared to the other one. So if you got any small caps that you've been keeping an eye on, yeah, don't uh, you know, might not want to hesitate if you see them moving. Jamie, any uh, any thoughts on uh, what we're looking at here? Well, uh, it was an encouraging close, you know, above that, uh, mm -hmm. what's the magic number there, the 343 level? Yeah, 343, yeah. call it that. Um, so get a strong day tomorrow, edge on up to that next little, uh, with the high of that bar from the fourth. You know, I could see us going sideways tomorrow or edging on up to that, uh, that previous high from September 4th. Yeah, yeah. You know. I, uh, yep. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, time will tell. I mean, like I said, I think you got to be, it's almost like this market is tiptoeing up, you know, kind of really, you know, looking around as it creeps higher. So uh, any little, you know, macro news or it doesn't have to be macro news, just any, uh, any, any news, I think, related to the presidency, uh, the, uh, the big election we have coming up, uh, you might want to, you know, just keep your stops in in place or you know uh, keep an eye on the market if you if you do have to get up and walk away because uh, it can get tripped up really re really quick in, a, in an environment like this right and there's a lot of back and forth like you were saying Andy a lot of back and forth in a lot of these stocks you know mm -hmm. drop nice up oh, back down to flat you know oh we're down significantly oh we're profitable again in that position um, seeing a lot of that and just our little internal blotter you know that, that we mm -hmm. maintain um, sure. But then also, too, I'm noticing correlations with the AI and the market conditions that we're in. Um, number one, the you know low number of trades from the AI because it's even from a statistical model standpoint, we're just in a spot in the market where it's harder to find that alpha. So, uh, you know, uh, the good news is when things start to change, hopefully we'll have a little bit of an edge um, by seeing maybe some differences in the way the AI is trading or more frequency. Uh, going up to the the next pivot point, or you know, curling down to the next pivot point. So we'll just have to see. Yep. All right, Jamie, you want to take it over? And uh, I'm sorry, I was reading some uh, some of the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was looking at Todd. Yeah. He had some AI questions there about ten, you know, time frames, yeah. specific time frames. And I guess I'll say this about the AI. You know, the the question is, well. Are you going to have strategies that look more at the one minute time frame, the five minute time frame? And although we have filters for all of those time frames, uh, a variety of different filters and alerts that all look at one minute, five minute, 15 minute, what everybody has to understand is that the AI strategies are collections of filters, okay? And the end all be all as to whether or not that strategy has a chance of making it uh, into the cut is how the optimization and the back test works out right uh, if it meets that minimum score on our scoring system then that strategy is going to make the cut for the next day um, not necessarily because we you know from a user standpoint I can completely understand hey I'd like to see things on these smaller time frames but that's not the way the AI works right it takes what's working best in the back test and sometimes it might be those smaller time frames and sometimes it might not be but it's using the collective filter power uh, and the end all be all of the back test and the optimization to dictate whether or not the strategy makes the cut for the next trading session. Um, it's not like we can force a one minute strategy in there, right? Right. And let me add this, uh, Todd. I think, you know, 
you're referring to the AI. Okay, we have tons of uh, we have a actually a Momo channel, a Momo Momentum channel. Uh, uh, you can see on my blotter here, Extreme Master Blaster, Extreme Volume High Low Pro. We have tons of momentum alerts. Okay, it's just not AI driven. Okay, it's uh, it's something you can fit or can, you know configure yourself, and you can see all the ones coming through that's doing uh, doing huge volume, breaking out, whatever you know, however you want to set up the uh, your your filter. Uh, so uh, we do definitely have the technology for everything you ask you're asking for, but I can tell you from experience because I tried to back test momentum alerts. There and it's it's virtually impossible because um, each one has its own personality. You you don't have any idea, or uh, we'd all be you know retired somewhere living on an island. You know which one of these alerts and the momentum alerts are going to continue to go. You can make your best judgment by looking at the, you know, volume and, and is it breaking out of a range on the daily chart? And, you know, that's what I try to teach people to do, but uh, to try to correlate that into an AI, it's virtually impossible because uh, there's so much high frequency trading noise. Uh, so, uh, but anyway, we do have the technology. It's just not into and in, built into Holly for as far as I, I shouldn't say that we do have one called, uh, Neo, you might want to keep your eye on Neo during earnings season. It looks for fast moving, you know, stocks. Okay, uh, that would be my your best bet as far as uh, you know trying to find the ones you know in play uh, using our AI. Yes, Andy, and that's another odd thing is that Neo is the more aggressive of the trio, and it was completely silent today. So that's also kind of telling us about where the market is and what kind of state mm -hmm. things might be in. Of course, the correlating lower volumes in the big tracking ETFs today too. So it's kind yep. of like the market's taking a little bit of a, a breather today as far as volume goes. Yeah, exactly. And, and don't give me another week once we have earnings really pouring in. Yeah, that NEO is going to be very active. Uh, it should be anyway, uh, but uh, maybe maybe another two weeks. But. Uh, all right, Andy. I'm going to go right. ahead and grab it from right. you. And, right uh, Holly recap is going to be relatively short. And no, that's sweet. fine. Um, based on what we see here, you know, uh, we only had. Let me get my pointer out here. If we check out the title bar or the channel bar over here, 1.0 only kicked out two signals. 2.0 only kicked out three, and of course, Neo took its nap today. Um, so we only had five signals total, which we can see on the alt trades plotter here. You know, and up slightly if we're looking at trading 100 shares per trade. However, if we come down here and click on moderate profit, assuming I'm risking 100 bucks per trade and letting the system get me into as many shares as that would uh, permission, um, down slightly here. And of course, this is a gross total. It doesn't take into account commissions or slippage. Um, so if we tacked on slippage and commission, yeah, I'd probably say double that. You know, if I were auto trading the AI today, I'd probably be down about 100 bucks in moderate profit mode, even though we're seeing a gross of, of 53 there. Um, okay, so typically what I like to point out uh, are some of the spreads between conservative and moderate profit that have developed by the end of the day. And of course, today we only have this one right here ATGE, conservative profit 3780. If you held till the end of the day, you're looking at 116. Um, yeah, well, there, there's a $3 spread right there in CTVA, but we're not going to worry about that one. Otherwise, just kind of lackluster, some small losers, losers down here, and one stop hit. And typically on the stop hits, sometimes these can be good uh, trade around stocks um, if we pay attention to how the stock acted around its stop area. And you can see here, once we got down to the stop area, it just kind of kind of hung out there all day. might have been worth taking a stab at. Um, in this area, but it, it ended up never moving. Didn't even get back up to the entry line there. So not really any decent uh, trade arounds to speak of. ATGE is the only one that we could have benefited or made money, uh, made more money in by ignoring Holly's timed exit signal here. Um, so exit price on this one, 2660, which is right about the, I wouldn't say the bottom of the wick, or maybe it is. I'll just put a little line right here. But this is where Holly got out of the trade right here based on her timed hold right there in that wick. Um, time to exit on, on support. That was a 60 minute hold as we can see down here. So she just pulled the plug because the stop loss didn't get triggered. She didn't make the reduced risk or the profit save exit. Um, 
but this one, you know, if we were trying to take a little piece with Holly here and hold the other half till the uh, break even point, it would have got us out today. All right. We would have had to literally just kind of throw in caution to the wind and said, I'm going to stick to my hard stop. Had you done that, it would have paid off. You would have had to sit a little bit of pain back down to the entry level um, before finally catching this move in the latter part of the day here. Oops. How did I do that? All right. Sorry about that. Um, but that's pretty much it. Just a little bit of spread here, about 76 bucks, uh, a little bit more than that between conservative and moderate profit exit on the ATGE. Not a bad exit in the uh, CTVA here. Pretty much held that one into the close on another timed exit. Uh, entry signal coming way back here. And just a nice little slow increase slow uh, into the close. But uh, mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. Holly was pretty uh, docile today, yeah. and uh, that's about all we got for the Holly show. All right, Jamie. Hey, thanks a lot, buddy. Appreciate it. Sure. Good job. All right. So let me uh, let me dig up this uh, SMA tracker I want to talk to you about, and just kind of give you a little background on this. So I was working with a. Uh, a fund manager that had a you know a, a pretty big portfolio with all his big clients in there and he wanted to figure out a way to how what's a good way for him to keep track you know to keep track of all these stocks that are in there you know he had a list of about 30 of them i think and uh so what i did is i built with him what i call the sma tracker now let's take a look at the uh, i know there's a lot of data points here let's take a look at what we're looking at by going the configuration and this is the top list, which means there doesn't have to be alert. Okay, anything uh, is going as long as everything is uh, excuse me as long as everything is meeting the filter set, shouldn't have any problem with. Uh, I mean, it should be pulling pulling up in your scan. So what you want to do is when you build these top lists, you want to keep them real basic in the in the configuration here. You can see this is my total configuration is price above five dollars. The EPS, this is just an EPS hack to, to make sure no ETFs will come through. And then average daily volume above 500,000 shares a day. Uh, uh, I don't like tra trading stocks that only do 100,000 or something like that. I like, I like them kind of a little bit liquid. All right, and that's it. And then what you do is you use the power of columns. So uh, in this case, I didn't have a, I, I didn't put a symbol list in this one. What I did in this one, was did the comp score the stock composite rating okay has to be above 70. so i know any stock that has a composite rating above 70 it's going to be a pretty decent looking stock okay on a chart uh just by the way it's a scale from 30 to to 100 so i if it's above 70 it's it's typically going to have a very bullish uh, trend to it all right, so what I want to do is, okay, let's let's pretend like this was my portfolio and I wanted to to track it. You know, I want to be able to just look on my top list and see where a stock might be trading without even having to go and pull up a chart or pull up, uh, uh, you know, the my blotter to see if I'm up or down or something like this. I can just kind of quickly look at a, a top list window and, and and look at it from there. So I wanted to, to add some very important columns that I could use. So I just started going in here and building columns for it. Okay, simple, uh, symbols, pretty straightforward. And then I wanted to see change from 200 SMA. I want to see change from 50 SMA. I want to see change from 20 SMA. And I wanted to see change from 10 SMA. Okay, thus the name SMA tracker. Okay, these are all SMAs. So uh, I want to see where the stock is trading relative to its all important SMAs in my in my book anyway, uh, and the rest of them just basic change from close relative volume. I like to know when the earnings date is. You can look on there and see when the earnings date is. So remember, every filter that we have, you can use as a column. So when you're using a top list, don't try to use too many filters because you can always move it, put it in a column and just sort it and find that data anyway. All right, so that is the way it worked. Now, what I did is, and this is not gonna be a class on color coordinating, but it's it's pretty easy if you wanna do it. Uh, 
if you want to do like a column, you just right click in a column and you go to customize color colors. Okay. And then if I wanted to, I hope I don't ruin this, but if I wanted to, let's say I wanted to build a new one. Okay. I could just delete all. And then I can just come in here and put in my breakpoints. Okay, let's say I was my breakpoints were uh, 50. 30. Well, let's try that again. 30. Uh, 10. Zero. So you see what I'm you see what I'm doing here, and I think I had a negative five in there. Okay. Then once you once you do this, you have all these breakpoints, and you can use our little color scheme right here to create the coloring in your columns so when you see a color you can automatically kind of uh, it's easier to pick up you know as far as where the breaks are in other words if a stock's trading 15 relative volume versus two relative volume you can you know break it down by the colors you can see a dark color you know it's hey it's doing 15 or what but i'm going to cancel this because i've already done it i just kind of wanted to show you and then you could come over here and make these different use our different color schemes here or you can flip on flip colors there's a lot of things you can do for it with it all right so i'm going to cancel this because since i already got it in there all right so you you may be asking okay how can this help me well First of all, it can be great if you have like a portfolio and you wanted to follow, just like I was telling you about. You can look in here at any time uh, at your stock, and let's find one that may be kind of, uh, this is a good one. Let's say you own this CELH right here, okay? I know it's had a big run over the last several weeks or months, whatever it is, because it's still 97% above its 200-day SMA. Okay, that's a huge number. Okay, but look what's happening here in the 50 day. Okay, it's barely above the 20 day, it's actually below. You can see this white is going to be a negative figure, it's negative 3.7. The 10 day, it's below it now. Okay, so I know this one has had it, it was up a lot more and it's having a pretty good, you know, pullback right now. And if I pull this up. You can see it did. It had a nice little run from $4 all the way up to $26, and now it's kind of pulling back. And you can see it's resting right there on its 50-day moving average. See, our column right here is showing you that, hey, this. if I'm not in this stock and I see this, I'm thinking, man, this may be a pretty good entry there. You know, It's been kind of going sideways. It's pulled back. It's held at 50 right there. It's held at 50 there. Let me get my curve. You can see it held this 50 there. It bounced off the 50 there, and here we have it again. Now, if it breaks below that, it could be in danger of selling off, you know, more. But I can tell with even out even without even pulling up the chart, you know, I can see this information on my uh, on my top list window here, this tracker. And let me show you another way. It's a great way to use something like this. Okay, let's say uh, go back on my cursor here. You can sort by the different days. So you want to see which ones are up more above their 200-day moving average. Just pull it, sort by the 200-day moving average. Look at this one. You know, the things has gone from you know two dollars to fifteen dollars. Now it's pulling back. Even with this pullback, it's still 279% above its 200-day moving average. That tells you it's had a huge move without even looking at the, uh, you know, without the chart. Now, let's say you want to look for opportunity. OK, let's say you want to you want to find some opportunity in the marketplace. You're you're you you know, all these have a score that are greater than 70, which is a good score. Uh, and you want to find things that may be pulling back to their 50 day moving average. Well, what I would do is just sort by 50 day moving average. OK, now all you got to do is scroll down, find the ones that are near zero. And here they are right here. You can start wherever you wanted to and just thumb through these. There's one right there that popped above its 50-day moving average there. But all these are going to be just above their 50-day moving average. This one's actually pulling back next to it. So this can this can really come in handy when you're looking for opportunity. Or let's say 
50 is not your thing. You want to look at the 20 day moving average. Same thing. We'll sort by 20 day moving average. And we want to go down to where we get close to zero. And voila, we just find these right here. The C back should be touching it. Pretty sloppy chart there, though. Uh, there's one just resting right above it, kind of like the uh, Morgan Stanley. I'm not sure what's going on with these brokers. I tell you, they're just all over the place. Uh, there's one right there. It doesn't look bad, just resting above. And what you'll find when we do have a pullback in the market, okay, uh, you're going to find a lot more setups in there because right now we just had a couple of good days. A lot of these, although that one right there looks like it wants to go higher, holding up very well. Let's say you want to be more aggressive. Okay, what are we going to do? We're going to search for the – we've done the 50, we've done the 20. Now let's do the 10-day. All right. We can scroll down here, and there you have it. Now these are going to be probably a little stronger charts pulling back. Look at that beautiful one right there. Flowers Foods. Okay, you got that 10-period that, uh, moving average right below it. Could be setting up for a possible. This is how you find opportunities, guys, by scanning in the nighttime. Look at this possible right here, cup and handle, almost textbook. That's one I'm going to mark up right now and keep an eye on for sure. And I'll just set you know, price alert right there. All right, ZTC. That one. Interesting. A couple of, I don't know what's going on there. A couple of big volume bar days. It's crazy. And has gone nowhere. Jeez. <laughs> I'm doing a little homework during my webinar, Jamie. <laughs> uh, hey, there's nothing wrong with a little multitasking. No. <laughs> Nice little wedge pattern or the flag pattern right there. If you draw the draw, I'm not gonna just do it right there. You can kind of see what what's happening, what's going on there. Uh, so guys, something like, like a, a a scan, and, and let's face it, ours is a lot more sophisticated than what you're gonna find out there. You know, in the in the uh, in the marketplace, our competition, because we can do so much di dynamic sorting and. Uh, uh, so many filters you know that we have that can show you pretty much anything that you want let's say you just want to see which ones have done the most relative volume we can sort by relative volume of course a lot of these are going to be big gap up strong on the day that little rip jks I could be putting in a top right there well, time will tell not sure what the news on IBM today. It's one I don't follow anymore. So you can, uh, there's so many things you can do. Change from the close. You want to sort from change from the close. So this can be just a very, very powerful tour, tool. You know, just maybe midday, just to have up to keep you keep you away from trading when things are just acting irrational. Uh, maybe, you know, if you take this and and when things get slow, you can uh, look for opportunity and just set price alerts like I did just then. Uh, you know, when it comes to trading, uh, you know, I, I think uh, a lot of times, you know, your, be your best uh, uh, thing to do is is to just do your homework and, and don't be trying to force trades that aren't there. And we're seeing a lot of that lately. But um, I'm trying to think if I miss anything else, I want to talk about this. And I, uh, once again, I use SCORE here. You can use this with your watch list. This would be something great to use with your watch list. Uh, so you can just uh, sit there and find opportunity. Uh, and not all of them are going to be up on the day either. You can see some down here that just got smacked around like that WWER. Maybe if something like this you're watching, if it has meets with this fast line, this 10 period moving average, you can come in here and just say, I'm going to make a price alert right there because I think it may be touching that 10 period moving average at that time. All right, guys, so what I'm going to do is I am going to share this with you guys, and once again, uh, I think it could be uh, a very practical tool, especially in the evenings, you know, you know when uh, you want to do your homework for the next day, pull something like this up, make some price alerts, and uh, be ready for the next day. Let me go ahead and share this.
and you will find it. I'm going to drop it into the chat window of your GoToWebinar interface and SMA Tracker. And there you have it. So for you people who are new in here, what I'm doing, I'm sharing the cloud link. I'm sharing uh, the code for this uh, this window so people can actually grab it right out of the chat window there and have access to it immediately. Uh, nice feature that we have at Trade Ideas, the, the, the ability to share any scan with people. All right, before I move on, Jamie, uh, to the price alerts, is there anything? Let me get me a drink of water too, please. Anything I need to ask out there, answer? Just look at this last question that popped in. The problem of scan right. is the time we never can take a scan of stock kappa. I, can you yeah. see that question from Yassine? My uh, chat panel had gotten smashed together, so now I can see the whole question here. Well, yeah. Well, well here's the thing, uh, Yassine. When it comes to gaps, you know, that's that's a potluck a lot of times. Okay. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this scan right here, okay, if you looked at it the night before, it's going to look totally different because none of these stocks that gapped way up are going to be in there where they might be, but they they might be lower, you know, in the, uh, obviously, in the relative volume and the uh, changes from the moving averages. Uh, but gaps is just something everybody's got to deal with. You, you know, that's, uh, uh, that's something that nobody can predict. I mean, so... Uh, but nonetheless, I mean, of, of all the stocks that are in here, which is probably about, if I had to guess, probably about 100, um, you know, maybe only a handful, he had really big, big gaps in them. But, hey, you're, you're at least seeing them. You're seeing the ones that gapped up. So you can always come in and look for pullbacks, you know, keep track on it, keep track of it by using the 10 period. I'm sorry, the, yeah, the 10 period SMA. Maybe that stock that's gapping up today Four days from now, it's pulling back, and you're seeing it close to the 10-period moving average. All right, let's move on to the price alerts. It's been kind of fun. Let's see who the big winner was uh, this past week here. And it looks like to me the winner was Waleed with a percent triggered from the symbol WORK. The alert price was $27.99, would have been right in here, okay, and it's had nice four days of follow through. So a nice one there, Waleed, if you're in here today. I noticed that uh, several several of you guys had some really good ones. Uh, play from uh, Dave was, uh, hasn't really gone far, but uh, I think this may have been a pullback. Yeah, I think a pullback alert that yeah, was actually true. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Five, a little over five percent, not too shabby. Yep, not too shabby at all. Uh, Flowers from Jeff uh, was doing a lot better after a couple of days. It's pulling back now, but it's got that uh, fast line coming up. This is one that could uh, continue higher there. So you guys know what you're doing. Team uh, had a pullback today, but was doing quite well. Uh, Farouk, uh, if you're in here, that was a good one. I see Waleed and Dave. All right. It was. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, so nice work, guys. Very nice work. Let's do this. OK, gosh, I hate when I have all my, <laughs> I put all my alerts in here and I got to trash them. Uh, you know what? Maybe I don't. I can just use the created. I can sort by created and it should be on the bottom. Let me see the ones I just put in there. Yeah, let me do that. Let me try that. All right, guys. So we're going to do this again. This is this is fun. Not only that, we're we're everybody's getting these ideas. I'm sharing them with everybody. Jamie had the uh, the good idea to, to share them last week, so you guys can uh, see how everybody's doing against each other. I'll make notes in there again. Once again, I need you to call out the stock and the price. Okay. And Dave is quick on this one. Oh yeah, he's you see that from my uh, I think from my I thought I saw that on my. Revenue growth fishing. I don't know what happened to it, but he says BMRA, and yeah, it was definitely on there. For some reason, it's not on there right now, and it is at <laughs> 786. So he's putting it. That looks pretty good there. 
I tell you, I've made, I've done very well with that revenue growth fishing today. I caught this. I was in this J move coming into the day. Uh, I tweeted it out yesterday. I don't know if anybody follows me out there, but uh, okay, this is Dave F. And yeah, I like the looks of that, Dave. So we're gonna put that right there, and actually gonna bring it down just a notch. There we go. May it pop back up. PL Bill says PL. Oh, I got it from Time to Nibble. I hadn't looked at that in a while. I'm gonna dig that up. PLMR and Time to Nibble at and PLMR is at 82.58. Oh, he's putting it tight. This may go off. It's it's already trading up to 83.41. So I'm gonna have to go a little bit higher, okay? Otherwise, it's just gonna keep triggering. So we're gonna put it right up here. We'll put it at 8067. And that is from Bill Enberg. Alexander says game. Game may have already triggered. 40. <laughs> Alexander, it's only trading at 14. Did you mean uh 14? Oh yeah, I don't. Uh, I need to tweet more, David. I'll I'll, uh, I'll throw that. Out. I'll give it to you for sure. Uh, uh, when Scott's signing us off here, uh, but Alexander, I need you to forty, but it's trading at fourteen. Fourteen forty-two to be exact. They signed up with right, right, but you're. I'm, I'm giving you where you might put the price alert, not not where do you think it's going to go. Uh, I tell you what, I'll stick it at I'll stick it at 15 up here because it's a good chance. Or let, I'll tell you what, let's put it at 1475. All right, guys, we need some more. We need some more players. HD from Todd Bell. And I need a, a price on that HD. That looks pretty good there. You just want to go above like today's high or 285 or something? Now I'm going to go, we got it's trading right now at 285. Let's go, we'll go to 285, 20, 20. And all right, they're coming now. Zoom. Uh, Zoom. Uh, I need a. I need a price on Zoom. Jeff has P R T S at above eleven seventy. All right, let's do that. And that would be Jeff. Okay, let's see. I'll go back to that one, Todd, 292. Uh, and Exxon, 3725 from Stan. Thirty-seven twenty-five. You sure you want to go that high? Ah, that will do it. Stan G. Vox from George Young at. Nine to nine fifty. Yeah, we don't need uh yeah. Let's go at nine. And that was uh, okay, I got your zoom and that was George Young. And we got zoom at four eighty two fifty.
All right. And, oh yeah, you wanted me to change that. All right, looks like they're all in, guys. Let's see, now we've got one more from Waleed. I don't think you had one yet, Waleed. Uh, 2795. And we got beyond being coming in oh boy that, that thing's crazy uh he's con he's looking for continued momentum for david harper at 195 Yeah, that's true, Dave. It is. All right, all right, guys. We got we got quite a few. Thank you, thank you for playing. This is uh, this is fun. Let me go and find them and share them with everybody, so you guys can kind of keep track. It should be down here at the bottom. Yep. So let me just copy. All right, and I'm going to drop them in the chat box, guys, so you guys will have them. Price alerts. This is fun. Made the best man win or a woman. And all right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. We will <clears throat> circle back around next uh, next week and uh, check them out. And I'm starting to lose my voice, so I'm going to bring Scott in here to walk us out. Thank you guys so much for your uh participation today and Scott you can come on in and walk us out of here thanks thanks Andy yeah a couple things on the way out um, we do have daily support sessions so bookmark the link trade-ideas.com slash live and join us during market hours it's at uh, 12 noon Eastern we also simulcast our trading room on there. Uh, we've got an earnings ebook out and available, trade-ideas.com slash earnings. It has uh, some strategies there to help you take advantage of, earn of earnings season and how to use them. We've got a new podcast up this week. Search for Trade Ideas Podcast wherever you listen to your pods. As a subscription, grab the newest up and some of the more recent ones. They've got a series of interviews. Uh, there's a code, Fall Savings, all caps, saves you 15% off your first month or year of trade ideas. Or you can also use that code to save on an upgrade from standard to premium. Um, Jamie can be found on Twitter at FontPot. Our Steve Gomez is at State Trader. We also have at Trade Ideas. Trade Ideas Pro is the Facebook handle to follow and like. And any questions at all, email us info at trade-ideas.com. Uh, the recording of this webinar will be up later on tonight or tomorrow. And go to webinar. We'll send you a reminder tomorrow with the playlist for you. Everyone. Thank you, Thank you, Jane. Thanks, uh, thanks everybody. Uh, David, uh, send an email. I'll, I'll shoot you that over there. I'm sorry, I forgot. Jamie. All right, everybody, have a good one. See you tomorrow.